What's up guys, it's Eventon here. In this video, I'm gonna be covering some industrial hauling fits for you guys, more specifically the T1 fits, uh, or I should say T1 haulers for the Amar Empire. I've, this is probably like the second or third most requested topic for you guys when I did the community post probably about a week ago. I wasn't really sure how I was gonna divide up all these videos. I don't know if I wanted to make like one mega video just covering all of them. That would take a lot of preparation and time. I think it's a bit easier for myself and you guys if I made some bite-sized portions. So in this video, we're gonna be covering the T1 haulers for the MR Empire, that's just because that's the one I have the most experience with as well as the best skills. And uh, there's a few reasons why I like the MR ships over some of the other empires, but I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, so right now I'm looking at the shipping tree and if you don't have it hot, uh, you know, hot barred like me, you can click the E button up here, go to ship, then ship tree. And we're looking at the MR ships. And so down here, we're looking at the bestower and the sigil. These two up here are T2, we're not covering those today. And the bestower and the sigil, uh, I really like both of these ships and they obviously serve very different purposes as usual in EVE Online. Whenever there's a different ship, usually they fulfill a different purpose. Um, and this is pretty consistent with all the empires except for Galente. They have some very specialist uh, type of uh, T1 haulers, but usually one is meant for, you know, cargo size and the other one is typically meant for tanking and uh, agility. So I like to use the bestower as the example. It's the semi-truck. as a It's a huge container that you're taking behind you. Um, it can hold a lot of stuff, but it's pretty weak. Uh, it is made of metal, but if you hit that semi-truck at a certain angle and it rolls over, or it can take a lot of damage and, and uh, damage the cargo, that is pretty much the bestower. It's meant to carry uh, very large things or a lot of small things, whatever it is, just a large amount of cargo. Uh, that's usually inexpensive. Uh, that's pretty much the only reason why you would use the bestower, at least in my opinion, because if you carry things that are really expensive, I would say north of like 200 million or so, you could be targeted by uh, tornadoes, other games, anchors, uh, things like that. So if, if you are mission running and let's say you've been accumulating stuff for weeks or even months uh, at your mission hub and you notice you have a lot of stuff and you're between like 10 to 20 or even 30,000 uh, meters cubed of stuff, bestower is the thing you want to take because usually the, the loot from mission running stuff isn't that high unless you get like a good drop occasionally. The sigil is basically your armored vehicle. Uh, this thing has high tank, has actually really good agility. I mean, obviously it has more agility than a semi truck, and but it has much less cargo hold. And so I typically use this ship because it's very rare I'm hauling something that's very large and inexpensive. Um, when I was doing a lot of hauling back in the day, I was typically using the sigil because I wasn't taking um, things that were that large and I was pretty limited. So, I mean, we'll even just look at the example. So if we simulate the bestower here, you'll see by default it has 6,000 meters cubed of uh, cargo hold and the default EHP is 4,000, a little bit over 4,000 which isn't that much. But if we do the sigil, you'll see that the cargo hold was cut by more than half, but the health is pretty much like three times more. It's three times the amount. Let me double check. Yeah, so it's about two and a half times the amount. So as you can see, this got cut by half. This got uh, more than doubled. So it's pretty even. And the reason why I like the sigil, or at least just like the Amar industrial ships in general, is just because the amount of low slots. They have a lot of low slots that allows you to customize the fit a bit more. And it still has a respectable amount of mid slots where you can actually do a bit of shield tanking uh, to mitigate some stuff if you do need to add cargo expanders. So um, we'll go ahead and look at the fits here in a little bit. All right, now on to the fit. And the first one I'm going to cover just because it's a bit easier. I actually have one fit for the bestower and two for the sigil. So the bestower is really straightforward. Like I mentioned before, again, I blew up my UI to a laughably large size, so it's easier for you guys to see. Um, the bestower, like I said before, it's strictly made to haul very large stuff or lots of cargo uh, that is relatively inexpensive. I'm talking um, things like Tritanium, which is very, very large and very heavy. Um, a lot of meta modules, things like that. So the stuff that is just very large and bulky that you need to move around and either manufacture or just sell at the main trade hub. Uh, but it's just very large and that's essentially what the bestower is for. Um, as you see here in the mid slots, I don't have a any kind of uh, afterburner or micro warp drive. I just don't think it's needed. I mean, I guess you could put a micro warp drive in here in order to get like a 10 second line time if you cycle it once. But I mean, saving two seconds per jump, I mean, you won't notice a big difference unless you're going like 40 plus jumps. And even then it's only like a minute and a half difference of save time. But regardless, in the mid slots, what I did was just add cargo hold optimization ones here just to keep it inexpensive because the T2 versions do cost about like 10 times more. And at that point, we're gonna be like double or tripling the price point um, of the ship. So I wanna keep it inexpensive. So with max skills, uh, we're almost at 40,000 uh, meters cubed. And this tank is very, very, very low. So we, we, 
there is a chance that if you are holding something more than you know roughly 200 million in cargo in here there is a chance you could get ganked um, typically tornadoes are looking for things in like the 300 to 400 range uh, or plus in order to gank but who knows maybe they could be bored they they see you and they could lock you and kill you and typically they do about you know between 9 to 12,000 um, damage usually targeting your EM resistance, which is why I have an EM compact resist amplifier here. So I actually have two medium shield extender ones, a compact here, and I'm keeping all this stuff meta modules so it's alpha friendly. If you are an Omega account, or if you do have the capability to use T2 modules, um, just go ahead and upgrade them. But I did add some modules here in the low slots, and this is mainly because um, the first mistake I see a lot of haulers I should say make is that they tend to have way too much extra like cargo hold. So if you're only hauling, let's say 20,000, um, you know, let's say like 15,000 uh, M, M squared of stuff, um, you don't need these three extra cargo hold expanders. So as you can see, um, as I'm actually removing these, my EHP is going up because for each cargo expander that's in here, it's actually reducing your tank in the structure. And not only that, you're kind of double screwing yourself because not only are you reducing your HP, you're also not replacing it with something that increases your HP, which is why I put these here. So if you remove one of these cargo expanded cargo hold ones, go ahead and uh, put that there. So let's say you're hauling something that's only 20,000 M3. So go ahead and remove this, replace it with a 400 millimeter rolled tungsten compact plate. And you see our EHP is slowly going up each time as we keep replacing um, these expanded uh, cargo holds because we wanna make sure that in case we do get targeted, we have the best chance possible uh, to survive the gank. Um, I would say you're probably not safe from a tornado until you get to about uh, maybe this point. Once you get to about this point, you're relatively safe. The EM resistance is, is pretty high. Um, same thing with our thermal. And pretty much anything they target, um, unless it's a very maxed out T2 tornado with implants and all that kind of stuff, I highly doubt that we're gonna get down if our fit if our ship fit looks like this, um, but even then, uh, the you're better off using the sigil if you're if you're hauling something less than like eleven or thirteen thousand M3. You're honestly just better off using the sigil in that case. So again, this ship is made to haul very large, bulky things that are inexpensive. But again, if you are only hauling ten thousand or twelve or fifteen twenty five, you want to keep replacing these expanded cargo holds with the stuff that I put here. And you can just leave these in the in your cargo hold. Just remember that you have them in there. But as you're moving stuff around, just be sure to replace those uh, cargo expanders. All right, and the second fit I'm gonna be covering is the Sidra, I should say the second ship. I have two more fits to, to cover here. Um, I forgot to mention the Bestower. I didn't really bother with the cloak trick thing at all, because first off, that that's an alpha, or that's an Omega account deal. But uh, at least for the Bestower, you can't really cloak trick it. It just doesn't have the power grid to support a larger micro warp drive, which I'll cover here in a second. Uh, but this is basically the alpha sigil. You don't have the luxury of using a cloak or doing the cloak trick. Pretty much your first and only defense, you have two defenses as, as, a, as an alpha character. First is that you just gotta have really low cargo value or just be really unappealing. And your second layer of defense is basically your tank. So if that first layer of defense falls, like let's say you're hauling something that's worth uh, 400 million, at that point, that's out the window. Now you need to have enough tank in order to survive a gank. And this should, this will do it. This will actually survive a tornado gank. I believe even if it has T2 um, rigs, uh, no, sorry, T2 modules, as well as uh, ammo types and all that stuff, even if it targets your EM, you, you will be able to survive this because again, we have a much larger power grid and we can actually support two of these large um, shield extenders here in the mid slots, as well as uh, compact and thermal. Sometimes they, they will, attack your thermal resist occasionally, but I would say 90% of the uh, tornado ganks usually use the, the EM damage. And so we have a drone, and then we have a damage control one here in the low slot. Again, if you could do T2, do that. Um, again, the, the mid slots are the medium cargo hold optimization ones. And the reason why I do this, and I realize it's like reducing our tank at the same time, but let's say you needed to haul something that was uh, 10,000 meters cubed, and you remove this and you replace it with a, um, another, let's say 12,000, <laughs> you know what I mean. So let's say it's 12,000 and you just simply can't fit it and you put tanks, tank rigs, rigs up in here. You would have to basically destroy these tank rigs in order to be able to fit it. So I feel like it's always a constant that you're always looking to get more, um, you're always looking to get more uh, cargo space. So that's why I defaulted these to cargo space. And plus by default, the sigil is just very, very tanky. So hopefully I put a damage control in here. No, I did not. So I'll go ahead and put that back. If I can remember how, so damage control, and it was a T1 version. So this is this is what it is by def default. And 
Um, even this version can survive a um, can survive a single tornado gank. And again, as we're going along here, if let's say you're only holding, let's say 7,000 worth of M3, all you're gonna do is just keep replacing these slots. So you can remove that, replace it with the rolled tungsten. If you're only hauling say 8,000, you replace it with another rolled tungsten. And then as we keep going down and down and down, we just wanna keep replacing it with like the multispectral, um, multispectral energized membranes, which increases our resistance. So these two roll tungsten compact plates increase our overall armor HP, and this then increases our resistances um, at that point. And so that is basically the alpha sigil. I mean, just by default, even with just all expanded cargo holds here, and as long as you shield tank it really hard with a damage control, you will be able to survive a single tornado gank. Very, very rarely there'll be two tornadoes. Maybe there, there might be a thrasher there to help finish you out, but that's extremely rare that that will happen. Um, so we'll go ahead and look at the alpha version. All right, and I actually meant Omega Sigil, not alpha again. Uh, so looking at this, this fit is a bit different. And I changed a few things for a few different reasons. Again, in the mid slots, or I should say the rigs, uh, medium cargo hold optimizations, we just want to max out that cargo because even if we get rid of all these, we can still haul a respectable amount of M3 while tanking uh, the rest of the low slots. But if you guys don't know how to do the micro warp drive, like, or the cloak trick for the hauler, I have a bunch of videos on it. There's a ton of videos on YouTube about it. Um, we're not going to be covering that too much in this video, but essentially we have the improved cloaking device too. You will need to skill up to that eventually. I do have a compact micro warp drive, 50 MN. And what this can, this will allow you to do is basically instantly hit, um, like be insta warp when you decloak and you don't actually have to t try and time it with some of the other ships. And in the mid slots, instead of actually putting shield extenders, I just put more amplifiers. And so the reason for that is the more shield extenders you put on your ship, it actually increases your signature rate. So it's easier for ships to lock you. Um, and while we're using the cloak, we obviously don't want to get locked while well, before we cloak or even after we cloak, like let's say we mistime it, the higher that is, the faster they're able to lock on our ship. So what I did was just increase our resistances across the board and your first, and I would say almost, and with this fits specifically, your first layer of defense is the cloak trick. That is your first layer of defense. And if that fails most of the time in this fit, you, if you tornado decides to lock you and shoot you, you will die in this fit. But if you're getting, if you're really good with the cloak trick, um, you should be able to survive 99% of the time as long as you do it perfectly. But occasionally we know you can get unlucky. Sometimes you you land right next to a ship that's just AFK that you're not able to cloak or something is just moving around you and you're just not able to cloak for whatever reason. And again, all we're going to do here is that <clears throat> this you can still fly this. I don't recommend it, but you can actually fly this and actually haul up to 13,000 uh, worth of M3. But again, well, what we're going to do is keep removing these as we're going along. And I don't know why these are still compact. I thought I had the T2 versions, but regardless, um, we're just going to keep adding this on. And I would say it's not until this point, because I actually put uh, three plates on here, because you're actually able to fit three plates on the ship because of the massive power grid. It's not until this point you are safe from a tornado gang, in my opinion, um, because if they start targeting EM, uh, you're not really... Um, you actually have really, really high EM resist. And if you do get rid of these last two, that's when you can start putting on the uh, multi-spectrals last. So uh, this is my recommended fit that I would use for you Omega sigils out there that are trying to haul stuff, uh, specifically in high sec. Um, the fit I showed earlier with the five cargo expanders in the low slots, if you do get caught with that, you will die. But once you get up to this point, um, even if you do get caught, you, you shouldn't die. And as long as you cycle that correctly and you do the cloak trick correctly, you should be able to make it out okay. So, and as I've said before, my fits aren't meant to be 100% uh, cookie cutter because I have no idea, especially when it comes to industrial hauling. These, these these ships are meant to be extremely modular. You're going to be taking things in and out all of the time. And I have no idea what your typical uh, hauling runs look like. Like, um, you maybe you don't need these extra cargo hold optimization rigs in there at all. Maybe uh, at once a week, you always take a frigate that's uh, packaged as well as a few modules. So maybe you don't need all this extra room. Maybe you can actually fully tank this thing. So you can actually remove these and actually put in some hyperspatial velocity optimizers, which actually increases your warp speed. So if you are um, going between systems, this will actually help you get there much, much quicker uh, with your warp speed, especially if you're going 10 plus jumps away, whatever it may be. The whole point is that um, this, this can't be customizable. So don't take this as why don't you have this rig, that rig, whatever it is. The whole thing is meant to be customizable. The only rule of thumb I do have for you guys that you absolutely need to follow is that just don't over cargo hold expand your ship. If you're if you only need to haul uh, 3,000 M3, don't 
leaves seven cargo or you know four or five cargo expanders down here in the lows you don't need it replace it with tank that way you're safe as possible so that's pretty much it guys if you guys like this kind of content don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you guys have been curious about evil mine or if you're a new player if you guys are creating an alt i'd really appreciate it down in the description below there is a link that will give you 1 million uh, free skill points and the game is 100 free so you don't have to you know pay anything up front or anything like that um, the 1 million skill points is roughly eight weeks worth of training as an alpha but let's say you do decide to get upgrade to omega you still have those 1 million skill points which equates to about eight four weeks worth of skill training because you you train twice as fast but regardless that's it hope you guys take care and you fly safe